So now that we've gotten that out of the way, we're going to talk about a tag that is very, very widely used, and that is the div tag. And the way to really think about a div tag is kind of an empty container. And I know that's hard to, to visualize um, as far as what it looks like in the browser, but it's a way to contain other tags and make them do something or look a certain way, uh, be a certain position on the screen, etc by using CSS. At its core, the div tag really doesn't have any properties. Um, the most important property to know is that it has a display property set to block. So it is what's considered a block level element. Um, the other main type of element would be an inline element. And a way to think about these two elements or decipher the two is really a block level element will stack. So for instance, a paragraph by default is a block level element. And if you have two paragraph tags on your page, they're going to stack. Uh, one is going to be on top or below the other one. Whereas an inline element, even though it might be stacked in the code, might be written on top one on top of the other, uh, they're going to show up side by side. So let's take a look at the div tag. There it is. That is a div tag. It's pretty simple. Now, most times you're not going to use a div tag just by itself. You're going to put things in it. And that's, again, why we use the term container, or sometimes you'll hear the term wrapper or wrap. So in this div, I'll put a paragraph. Up until this point, we really haven't discussed the hierarchy of things, um, which is often referred to as the DOM, or the document object model. And you almost kind of look at this like an outline. You have your elements, and then you have elements within elements. And those elements can have elements within them as well, and so on and so forth. So in this case, we have a div, and within that is a paragraph. So technically, this paragraph is a child of the div, and the div being the parent tag. And this is going to be even more important when we get into CSS. So let's create another child element within this div. And let's let's create a list. So we'll create an unordered list using the UL tag, which we discussed in a previous video. Uh, and within there we need to have list items. I'm just going to copy and paste this below and create a second one. So with this list, if we if we think about the document object model again and the hierarchy of things, the li tag is a child of the ul tag. And the ul tag, along with the p tag or the paragraph tag, is a child of the div tag. And then technically, the list item tags are children of the ul and the div tag. And I'm not going to dive too much deeper into that right now because I don't want to confuse you with all that. But as a big reason why we do tab things out in our document, so we can you know, get a visual representation of what is within what. So as I noted before, we used to use tables to lay out documents. This was almost a decade ago when that was really prominent. Um, and that allowed us to set items side by side and, and things like that. But then when we got out of using tables, when CSS2 came about, we started using divs instead of the table cells and columns. And we would use CSS to manipulate the divs along with what was inside of them. Now to illustrate this point, we're going to go ahead and take a look at just a little bit of CSS, which is going to introduce yet another tag, and that is the style tag. And we're going to do so within the head of the document. So after line 5 here, after the title, I'm going to hit enter a couple times, and I'm going to start a style tag. And within this style is where we're going to write our CSS. And for those who are completely unfamiliar with CSS, think of CSS as a way to create rules that dictate how these HTML tags or elements are going to act on a page, what they're going to look like, where they're going to be, etc. So I'm just going to introduce a, a few of the properties we can manipulate in CSS uh, and just a, a few general CSS topics. So I mentioned that we use rules to manipulate the elements on a page. 
So let's write a rule. The first thing we need to do when writing a rule is choose a selector. And what a selector does is it basically tells the CSS what we're going to be manipulating, which element or elements. And the most basic selector you can use is a tag. For instance, if I want to manipulate the paragraph tag on this page, our selector would be P. If I wanted to manipulate the div tag, it would be div and so on. So in this first example, we'll go ahead and we're going to manipulate the paragraph tag. So we have our selector. Now the next part of this rule is going to be these curly brackets here. And within these curly brackets, this is where the properties go that we're going to manipulate. Generally, we're going to bring that closing curly bracket down a few lines, give us some room to write our rules. Um, and before we go any further, I'm just going to go ahead and save this document. And this is example seven. So after you saved it, we're going to go ahead and look at this in the browser really quick, uh, just so we can see the difference between now and when we start adding the CSS. So I'll go ahead and change this up here to seven. And there you go. As expected, we have a paragraph and an unordered list. And like I mentioned, though we have a div tag in there, a div doesn't really have any properties. So unless otherwise specified, it's not going to be seen. So we've got this paragraph rule set up and within these brackets, we're going to add a property. And like the other properties within HTML, these could also be called attributes uh, and a few other different names. The first property I'm going to introduce would be, will be the font color property, which is simply color. When writing these rules, the format is the property, colon, the value, and then a semicolon. So for the value, we're going to put in a hex code, which I'm just going to pick some, some random characters, which we get kind of a pukey yellow. So again, we have the property colon, uh, the space is up to you. I like to put a space there. Um, but then we have the value and the semicolon. And the semicolon basically says this is the end of a property or the end of a statement. So if we wanted to add another property, we go down to the next line and let's go ahead and just do background color. Now there are some shorthand ways to write some of these properties and we'll show you that later. So background color, just like color, we're going to have the property colon color value and we're just going to go with black for now. And there you go. So before we preview this in the browser, let's just go over what we've done. We've created a rule in CSS with the paragraph tag as the selector, which means we're going to apply these properties to the paragraph tag on the page. Now, if there were more than one paragraph tags on the page, this would apply to all of them. But you should note that this is only applying to what is within the paragraph. So right now, it's just the text within that paragraph tag. So go ahead and save this, and we'll refresh the page. And there you go. So as noted, this only affected what was within the paragraph tag. Now, the reason it spans all the way across the page is because like a div, a paragraph is a block level element and it's going to take up an entire line unless you tell it not to. So let's flip back over to Dreamweaver here. I'm going to toss a comment in here really quick and then we'll move on. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and create another example. 